and apparently in California these are very dangerous so we're gonna take these stickers off hey look now they're safe this one is safe this one is still this one's still very dangerous hello and welcome today's video is going to be a little bit different I'm gonna rant against the Toyota Corporation as you can see here in the picture there is a sticker on the rear toe arm that says non adjustable stop if you know anything about suspension components this should throw up a red flag in your brain specifically because the RAV4 was originally designed to have an adjustable rear suspension however a series of recalls has plagued the RAV4 three to be exact and the last recall required the technician to essentially glue the toe arms together after performing a rear alignment, making them non-adjustable. At the time of the recall, when the technician performed the rear alignment, that's where the toe arm would stay and it would no longer be able to, to move in and out. As these components wear, the rear alignment will change, but because the rear toe arm is fixed, it results in premature tire wear. If you look through the RAV4 forums, some of the dealers will still perform a rear alignment, and the cost reported range from $500 to $1,000. In my case, I contacted my local Toyota dealership and was quoted $650 to break the epoxy, perform the alignment, and repoxy the toe arms. I was not about to do that. But since I was changing out my shocks and struts, I went ahead and ordered some toe arms as well. These were manufactured by Feebest and they cost me around $30 a piece. They are manufactured to the OEM specifications, so the possibility of rust is likely. I'll address this later in the video. There are also other manufacturers like SPC Specialty Components who make a higher quality toe arm. They are more expensive, and I've also read that fitment is a bit of an issue. So after removing one of the bolts from the toe arm, I discovered that it was probably going to be easier if I took off the rear shock first. The rear shock is pretty straightforward. Just remove the bolt holding the top of the shock in. And don't panic when you try to take off the bottom bolt and it hits the control arm. There is a bracket that connects the shock to the hub. Remove the two bolts that hold that bracket in place and you'll have a lot more room to get the toe arm out. The toe arm stud will probably be frozen to the hub, so just leave the nut threaded about halfway on, get a long socket extension, and then hit it with a hammer to free it up. <clears throat> now it's time to put the new toe arms on. But as previously mentioned, they are the OEM part, so I wanted to test out their rust resistance. I left one toe arm inside in the sealed bag that it came in, but I left the other one open overnight in the Alabama humidity. As you can see, after only one night, there are already some brown spots on the threads. So then I took both completely apart and coated everything with a Rust-Oleum rust inhibitor. But before we go any further, understand that a rust inhibitor alone isn't going to guarantee that something won't rust. Rust is another name for something called iron oxide, which occurs when an iron or alloy that contains iron, like steel, is exposed to oxygen and moisture for a long period of time. Over time, the oxygen combines with the metal at an atomic level, forming a new compound and weakening the metal itself. Rust can also be further exaggerated by two dissimilar metals coming into contact with one another, and I believe that's what's happening here. The turnbuckle seems like a stronger steel, while the rest of the toe arm seems like cast iron. So what does all that mean? Basically, to prevent rust, get rid of the oxygen. The Toyota Corporation did this with the use of epoxy, but I'm going to go a different route because I want to keep the adjustability of the toe arm. I'm using heavy duty tractor grease which has a rust inhibiting and anti-seizing property, making it great for this application. To ensure that no oxygen can get inside the turnbuckle, I packed it with this grease. I also put a light coat of it on the toe arm studs and began assembly. It was tough to screw these together, but if you listen you can hear some of the air escaping as the grease gets packed tighter with each turn. I 
I assembled the toe arm to the same length as the toe arms I removed so as not to change the rear alignment too drastically, but keep in mind that you will need to get a rear alignment as soon as you complete this job. Then just slide the new toe arm into place and torque everything down to spec. Now it's time to put on the new rear shocks. I also recommend using the OE Spectrum shocks as they have a higher quality than some of the other cheap shocks at the auto parts store. So just loosely bolt the bottom of the shock to the bracket so that it can still move. Then bolt the bracket back to the hub, then bolt the top of the shock to the cradle. Torque everything down and you're done. I plan to reinspect these after one year. I will disassemble them here on the channel and see if this trick prevented any rust. Even if it doesn't work, I'm happy to spend $60 a year on rear toe arms to prevent my tires from wearing out 20,000 miles early. As my rear tires had significantly less tread on the inner side. That being said, I do believe that this will solve the problem and I don't anticipate any issues, besides maybe repacking the toe arm with grease once a year after inspection. So what do y'all think about this repair? Leave a comment down below and let me know if you love it or if you hate it. And be sure to click that subscribe button to see more content like this in the future. Thanks, and have a great day. Hey, bud. Hey, bud. Bubba. Are you supposed to be on the couch? Is this where you go? Did you get a puppy? Yes. What? His no, name you didn't. is Tiger. Oh. Hey, bud. Wait, is that really ours? Yes, he's just a puppy. How old is he? He's 12 weeks old. Approaching the beast. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? Hey, bud. You're upside down. Hey. Sleepy.